Hey y'all, welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. We're gonna make our cold remedy tincture today. And I'm gonna add a few extra herbs that I normally don't use. I have always, the last couple years, just used goldenrod tops. We will be using goldenrod tops, but I have explored with a few other herbs that I hadn't really talked about. One I wanted to do a video on, but I have not because of the state that it's in. I, I should have did a video on it earlier, and you see these brown tops, and there is a few small yellow flowers. I'll zoom in in a second and get you a close-up of it. But this is Black-Eyed Susan. And what I want out of this is the root of this plant. So we're going to pull some of this up, dig it up with my knife, um, and we're going to put just the root in there. I'm going to add some turkey tail mushroom. I have some dried, but I think I know where some's at, so we're going to go look for that. Um, we're going to use goldenrod tops, obviously. And then I'm going to use a little bit of rabbit tobacco. Now, the rabbit tobacco I have already harvested. I will take you and show you where the one plant that I still have right here close in the, in the edge of my yard, um, where it is and what it looks like. I'm not going to go in depth into every medicinal quality of each of these plants because I have done all of them except this um, Black-Eyed Susan. And we will do a video on all the medicinal qualities of it in the future, but you can pretty well look this stuff up. And if you get some of these books I have, the information is in it. Now, the Black-Eyed Susan, not as prevalent in all the books. Some of them, like Goldenrod, is really common, and it's in every book you buy. The reason I have more than one book is because there's some plants in one book that's not in another one. And if I find, hey, this plant is in just this book, I want that book. So... And you can find a lot of information on medicinal plants on the internet. Just be very careful where you find this information because anybody can put anything on the internet. That's why I suggest don't even just take my word for what I'm telling you. Look it up and do some research before you actually use a medicinal plant. Uh, I'm here to help you, but you got to take into consideration that I could be wrong. The information I've received could be wrong. So you need to research for yourself. So let's zoom in. Let's look at this plant a little closer and get it dug up. And what I have, I've got my haversack right here with me. And I just have a jar. This is what I'm going to make my tincture in. I put the ring on the top just to protect it from getting chipped while I'm putting stuff in it. And then I'll put the, the flat on it whenever I get it. Um, up there and we put our medium in it. Now I'm right here beside my wife's building where she does her part of the pottery work. Good Lord. We'll pull some of this grass up. I really don't want to get the ones, I want to make sure I seed this out as well. So these seed heads, I'm going to make sure I pull them off and, and plant them, y'all. A lot of these cone type flowers, you know, obviously the seeds are in the blooms up here on most of them. And I'm not sure if these come back, honestly, y'all, from the seed or from the or from the roots. I don't think it is a perennial, but I am not sure. I do know these come back right here in this area every year. And some back over here, and I have already had moored them down. But the reason they're so brown, they would still be blooming, but it has been so dry right here, y'all, that uh, it's, it's just unbearably dry. So... I'm trying to separate them from the grass that needs to be cleaned up anyway. So 
so we're inevitably going to kill this plant. But now it grows pretty well in an abundance around here. And I don't know how much I need, y'all. I have never pulled the roots of this plant up. So if you want to see, I'll get a close-up. I'm going to lay them on this porch. And I'll get a close-up of what the roots look like. So... see how good this pickaxe part is in this type of dryness I don't really probably need a lot of it so I'm gonna break these tops off because like I said I want to scatter that seed and make sure it gets put back ground here And I may can look up and find some more somewhere else. This that's blooming right here, I don't want to pull up right now. So I'm going to stop with what I got. It, it probably ain't as much as I would really like to have, but it is enough. Okay, y'all, this is Nagphalium obtusifolium, which is rabbit tobacco or sweet everlasting. Uh, it has several names. They get up about a foot or so tall. I have greatly struggled to keep them in my area. They're not as widespread as they once was. Now, there are areas that there are a good bit of it. So I have left this one to make sure it's seeded out. I found some more the other day on a walk I did on some in another area that was really grown up and they have since i harvested that the the it was along a roadside they have bush hogged all of that so it was fortunate i got it when i did but it's it's a uh, green leaves the stem is white it has a very strong smell very sweet smell the underside of the leaves are white and they're like fuzzy and it has a lot of cold qualities um a, a lot of good benefits so we're going to use it. We're not going to harvest this. I'm going to leave this one there. I'll show you when I go to put them in the jar what I've got harvested. And, uh, and we'll talk a little more about some of them then. Y'all, I'm not going to these beautiful butterflies up here. I'm going to rob them of their pleasure. I'm not going to go into no in-depth spiel about goldenrod because I have done several videos on it. Goldenrod, though, is one of my favorite teas just to drink. And uh, it's very good green or dried. You can make a, just a tea to drink. And it's good to flush fluids off your system, diuretic, flush your kidneys, all different kind of stuff. But the main part of the, the cold properties are in this flower top. So we're going to take mainly just the flowers. I will use the green leaves as well. Uh, there's a lot of medicinal property in there even after it is not quite as yellow you see this one is turning brown already so it has you know probably been well pollinated 
So I'm just gonna stuff this jar. And my main ingredient in this medicine is gonna be the goldenrod. I am just adding some other stuff, mainly the turkey tail, to get the immune system boosting qualities out of it. So, now when you're doing this, obviously I'm looking on here for anything that's on our bugs and such as stuff that I might not want. There's a lot of these, what we call love bugs. You can take a pair of snips or scissors or anything just to snip these tops off and get them into your jar. I like using my old Green River style knife. I've dug with it everything. It has seemed to have held up really good for me. And I'm down here tiptoeing around barefooted. So I'm going to put this back in my... I wanted you to see what I was putting it in. Get my lid on my bag open. That way I ain't standing here holding it. I can do this a lot faster. Now some of this is, is altissima probably. Some of it is uh, canadensis. I think canadensis is one of the main most golden rods that we have in this area. But it don't matter really y'all. All the golden rods are going to have similar qualities. And now you see there's a lot of cut leaf cone flower in here and it has some similar properties but some very different. It's good with burns and stuff I think more so. Y'all, I had to show you this. This is Lobelia cardinalis. This is one of my favorite anti-anxiety medicines. Uh, I'm not gonna harvest this one. This is one of the few that is down here, but this is a beautiful flower. Uh, some of these I like to grow just because I like to look at them, and I have yet to be able to get this to grow in my medicinal garden. I've transplanted it in twice, it just won't work. But it is a good, calming, very, very, very mild pain reliever. More of a make a tea out of leaves and it's calming. Uh, so I like it for that. But this is Lobelia cardinalis, cardinal flower. up and down along these 
branches like I'm doing right now hunting for um, turkey tail because I'm having to look closer to the moist areas. Dry as it is, every snake around is going to be close to this water because that's where there's frogs. I have seen countless frogs right here jump into the water. I see the water moving right up there and there's like two or three holes that there's just a little bit of. So these snakes are laying down in there. If you're gonna do like me and walk around barefooted down here, the rattlesnakes are probably around too. I have yet to see one. I have not seen a rattlesnake personally in the woods in several years. I figure as much as I'm here, it's bound to happen pretty soon. So be careful where you walk, okay? If you're out, I know a lot of people live and let live and I'm pretty much that way. I don't just like this snake here, I'm gonna walk off and leave him under his log. He's minding his own business, and I'm not sure. I do think it's a copperhead, but I'm going to leave him alone. He's down here in his own element. But if 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 this is right where I was taking Brody a lot, and I had him, I'd have to dispatch that snake. Use your own judgment, but watch where you're walking, okay? I don't want you to get snake bit and have to try to use a snake bite remedy. I'm, I'm a little skeptical of them. I'm probably going to go to the doctor if I get snake bit. You know what I mean? But if I'm where I can't go, I'm going to try plantain and a few other things. But anyway, he's laying there. ain't moved a muscle. How many of y'all see that cotton mouth down there? He started leaving before I could get the camera in focus. Okay, y'all, they ain't many of these right here, but now it's so dry that they're going to be hard to find. But this is Trimetes versicolor. The other ones I showed y'all earlier were uh, a false, they're a cup-shaped false turkey tail. These are relatively young, very velvety still on the bottom side, but they are porous and fairly thick, so they probably enough to do what I'm gonna do I would like to have some more and I may add some that I have dried at the house into my tincture it's just dry 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 so finding things is a little more difficult that's why with it dry like this when you get around a, a hole of water watch for the mr. no shoulders the snakes uh, because we have seen two bad ones right there real close I eased on back out of there. I was actually there looking for snakes to show you. Um, uh, I had my little shovel with me, y'all, and uh, dug up while I was down there. Look at these giant mass green briars. I mean, these roots is huge on these things. So what this one, I've already made a tincture, y'all seen the other day out of one. And I've got several pieces. I'm going to chop them up and make tea, but I found these things are supposedly edible. So I'm going to do some more experimenting on that. Okay, this is the lost book of herbal remedies. And uh, I know a lot of you probably seen this advertised on Facebook and other places, maybe Instagram. It pops up a lot. I ordered it last year now I don't use this book a lot because one thing it's a large sized book but it's not real thick it is a good book it has you know medicine making and and covers actually a few more plants that some of the other books in my area does not the one I wanted to read that's in here that is not in some of the other ones is the uh, black-eyed Susan the black eyed Susan says for colds and flu, a root infusion treats colds and the flu. Common uses is to drink the root infusion daily until all symptoms is gone. Now I'm going to use a medium that is 50% alcohol, 50% water. You'll get the infusion qualities, the water soluble qualities, as well as the alcohol soluble qualities. And you take like, I'll probably take like a half a teaspoon of this when I'm sick with a cold. Uh, it is just a cold medicine. But it is also used as a poultice for snake bites, skin irritations, and most of this, y'all, is all root medicine. Ear aches, fresh roots, use the sap as eardrops. 
stimulates the immune system. Like echinacea, black-eyed Susan roots have immune stimulant activity to boost the immune system to treat colds and flu. Um, and while I'm sitting here thinking about it, y'all, in this I am also going to add some bone set. Uh, I have some right here already dry, readily available to me that has been hanging up drying, so I'm going to add that in there because I just thought about it whenever it said immune system and then uh, to treat colds, that is a fever reducer with a flu. It says black-eyed Susan will treat tuberculosis. So there's several different things. It said it's good for parasites. The Chippewa people have traditionally used black-eyed Susan root tea to treat worms in children. So get you, get you some books. If you're interested in this medicine making stuff and what to use it for. Um, so we're doing, you know, like the Native Americans would have done. Like we're doing our medicine making videos. We're doing this for... Uh, historical purposes of how the old mountain men and the Native Americans would have made them some their own medicine. So we're doing this. But these are where some of the knowledge and stuff comes from. And I got my help coming out here. You gonna help me, buddy? Get up here and sit right up here. Ah. Let me move this book out of your way. Just scoot back now. Whoa, don't bang your head on that stuff. Be easy now. You hold on to the shovel over there. You okay? You hit your head. You see. Get that stuff out of your way. All right, now it won't hit you. All right, here, you hold on to that shovel. You see this new shovel we got? Holds up. Got a holster and everything. Yeah. Who is it? It's mine and yours. Everything is ours. Truck on yeah. Ow. Okay. Daddy's making some medicine over here. Now, y'all, the rabbit tobacco that I'm going to use is in a bag right here. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull about a handful out. That's so, probably a large amount. So, I'm going to put. Barking. Yeah. She's barking. So, I'm going to put a pretty good bit in here, y'all. So I've got my turkey tail in there, and I am going to shove that on down in there with it, and we're going to pack all of this stuff together. So these roots, I'm going to wash them right quick over here. Okay, I have washed them pretty good. I'm going to break most of the stem. I'm just going to stick that off down in there, y'all. I'm going to pull this green plant material off. I'm breaking these off where that is fairly small like that and I have washed the dirt off put it in there like that Matter, y'all this stuff is is fairly simple for the most part uh, I think a lot of people seem to overthink a lot of it That. Now we're going to get this bone set. Put it off in there. Okay, right here, y'all, is turkey tail that I had harvested last year. That is why you put it in a jar, and I didn't label this, but I'm very obvious on what it is. Uh, so I'm just going to pack some more down in there. I am going to go grab some fresh bone set that I have. How can it help you get it? That is probably enough. See that will then this will boost the immune system too. Okay, we went and picked a couple of me and Brody did a few pieces of bone set just to make sure that we got, cause this will help if you're running fever with your flu, it will help break that. So this will be an all out cold remedy deal. And then here I have some more goldenrod top that I had dried already. So 
So that is about enough of that. Now we are fixing to add our medium. And y'all, if you use alcohol, use a lower proof because you get water soluble and alcohol soluble qualities. And that is perfect. So we'll let this stand for about 30 days in a out of the sunlight and that'll be our cold medicine for the winter so y'all this will this will last me probably more than the winter i don't take a lot of cold medicine uh but i think it'll be very good this is the first time that i have mixed several herbs and i got these recipes from the books uh, you can take a book like this, and what I've done was I go to the back of one, and I look under the areas to where it says, okay, cold medicine. What plants are all good for cold and flu? And you can go down that list and look at all the plants. Now, this book didn't have it out as good as some of the other ones. Uh, and, and read which plants do the best for colds and go look for those plants and then you need to further study them to see what you know how they work so that is kind of how I put this together I knew what plants do what but anyway thank y'all for watching the spirit of the outdoors remember the best way to do things is the way you like to do it and no I'm not a doctor I'm not prescribing you this medicine for your cold this is just what the old hillbillies mountain men self-reliant people would have done that was fending for themselves for medicine I just wanted to show you how they would have done it y'all have a good one we'll see you next time